Hi everyone, welcome on the Lights on Data YouTube channel. In today's video, we'll see how we can create a data visualization in Jupyter Notebook. Yes, you heard that right, in Jupyter Notebook. And for that, we'll be playing with a wine data set. Fun, huh? Because why not? Okay, dad joke in there. This data set is freely available and you can download it yourself so you can replicate what you've learned from this video. And I'll make sure I'll post a link to it below, but I'll also make sure that I'll include um, the details in the Jupyter Notebook that you will see here on the screen. So what do you need to make this work for you? Well, you need Python, you need JupyterLab, and then install Atoti as a Python package. I'll definitely post a link to these instructions in, in the comments below. Uh, but you know, all of these are free tools, so you shouldn't have any issues with it. And if you're wondering what you know, Atoti is, by the way, well, it's a free Python BI analytics platform. It's great for collaboration and analysis and just to turn data into KPIs. It's kind of like your own small tableau right within Jupyter Notebook. And you'll see what I mean after we play with our data set first. So here's our Jupyter Notebook that you'll see right here. I've divided it into these sections already just to make the flow better. And to speed things up, I'm going to copy paste some of the code that Hui Fang from Atoti put together. So thank you so much, Hui Fang, for outlining all of this and, and, and really making it so much easier for me to conduct this tutorial. I appreciate it. So let's start. First thing first, let's read both uh, of the Wine data sets into pandas uh, and here's the link by the way here's the link that you can use to download the, uh, this data set yourself it comes in in um, you know two files you have the red wine the white wine data sets so let's read both of the wine data sets into pandas and let's uh, set these things up for us to make it easier there you go uh, we also want to merge them uh, into one later so that we could just do more things with it. Just combine the the red and white wine. But first, let's let's read the the red wine. All right, there you go. And now let's read the white wine. Done. Now we can merge these two data sets. But because we are merging it, it's a good idea to enhance it a little bit and create a category column that would indicate if the wine is red or if the wine is white. Let's also create a, a wine index because there is no unique identifier in, uh, in this data set. So it's always handy to have one. And now let's merge both data sets into wines. Okay, perfect. Then we'll, we'll check it out. So we can see how we've enhanced it, that we have the wine index in on uh, the first column there and the category designating if it's a red wine or a white wine as the last column. Now let's enhance this data set even further by adding a rating as a dimension. So we'll kind of say that everything is rated good unless its quality is less than seven, in which case we consider it average. If it's lower than five, we consider it poor. Yes, we have high standards here. Let's check this one out. Oh, look at that. Look how quickly this went. I mean, 6,497 rows done like that. All right, now let's get into some analysis and just some cool data visualizations. So let's check out some correlations. By the way, the great thing about Atoti and having it work with JupyterLab is that you can take advantage of the Python libraries. And there's some greater libraries out there as we know. So let's turn to, to Panda and um, just put our focus on the red wine because you know they say red wine might have some health benefits, right? At least in France, they say that. So let's look at the features that are related to quality. Okay, look how quickly and, and fun this was. Now the correlation value is not very high. So just for demonstration purposes, we'll take the threshold value of 0 0.25 to just select a few key features that are most correlated. Okay, so let's do that. Uh, you know, we won't consider the interaction between the features. So for red, uh, let's see. We can see that the we, we have the volatile acidity, sulfates, and alcohol rate. And let's do this for the wine wine as well. Let's move it up so we can see here. And for white wine, we can see that we have the you know density and, and alcohol there. 
Okay, so far we've seen that we've used a panda frame as is, but let's see how we could consume this a little bit different as well. So still in panda, let's do a melt here. And well, let's see how that looks like. All right. So we still have the index, but each wine feature is now a variable and its value will become a value for that variable. So our new data structure will have the wine index, but its features will now be variables with assigned values. Okay, let's see what cool stuff Atoti can help us with now. So let's read this into a session. Let's have a table called wine quality here. And we'll also create a new key by combining the wine index and the variable because the wine index on its own is no longer unique, right? And we'll now create a cube from our wine quality table. And, and now let's see its schema. Simple, right? Let's join another table to this cube. And we're creating the wine detail table to include the, uh, the category and the rating, uh, which we just created earlier on and the quality. And of course, the wine index will be part of it as well as its key. We'll now join the wine quality with the wine detail. And here is its schema. A toti actually consumes what the join is based on the common column names. In this case, the wine index. So it just really makes it so much easier. But of course, you can manually map the columns too if they have different names. Let's now do some visualization. And we'll uh, visualize this as clustered columns. So let's see, right now we just have this table which will indicate that we don't want a pivot table. No, we want a visualization. So I said cluster columns. Let's select cluster columns here from the drop down. Simple as that. But of course, we don't have any anything on the x axis, y axis. There's nothing to visualize yet. So let's put the variable on the x axis. Okay, lots of variables there. Let's go with the value mean on the y-axis. And we'll split it by rating. Nice drag and draw functionality. Makes it easy. And of course, we can you know change it to other stuff. We can say 100% stack columns. Uh, we can change it to a line chart. We can change it to a pivot table if that's what we really want. Though I don't think so. Uh, let's leave it back to the um, the stacked, uh, the cluster column, sorry, the cluster columns here. But you can see how easily you can change everything. You know, everything is done on the fly. You know, it's fun, isn't it? Remember what I said at the beginning of the video? You know, it's like having Tableau within Jupyter Notebook. That's what I meant, what I meant. Please click the like button if you're enjoying this tutorial so far. Okay, let's move on. Uh, let's create some cool stuff. Let's uh, create a hierarchy now from the numerical column so that we could do an interesting, you know, line graph. So let's do that now. And let's see what's under hierarchy here. Okay, there you go. You know, we have all the columns that we created under the hierarchical columns earlier on. But let's now create a quality hierarchy which, um, you know, we'll take the mean of the quality column from the wines detail here, okay? So let's visualize the wine variable against quality and we'll visualize it as a line chart. But of course, you know, we don't have anything in this widget basically right now. And uh, let's do that. All right, let's select our line chart first. We'll plot the, uh, the value against quality. So value on the x-axis, um, quality on the y-axis. But we also want to split it by uh, by the variable. And I think we also want to split it by category. Okay, now this is a loaded graph. We can't really tell much from it. So we're going to filter out uh, basically everything except volatile acidity. So let's uh, not select everything. Let's just select the volatile acidity here. 
And there you go. This is a more um, uh, more comprehensive uh, chart, I think. You know, and when I saw this, I was kind of surprised that, you know, good wines could have a higher volatility, I guess, right? Such as these one here. They're, they're good wines. And um, yeah, and I was surprised that they have a higher uh, volatile acidity. Because to me, I thought that, you know, the less acidic a wine is, the better it would be. So my first thought was, okay, you know, did I do something wrong preparing the data? Um, then my data governance part of the rain kind of kicked in and told myself, don't make assumptions, look at what volatile acidity means for wine. And apparently volatile acidity refers to the acidic elements of a wine that are uh, gaseous rather than liquid. It basically represents the aroma of the wine that can be sensed as a smell. And, you know, it's an important characteristic, apparently, in many wines that kind of adds to the complexity and interest, often in a positive manner. Uh, but sometimes, you know, the aromas can also overtake a wine if it's not robust enough to balance. So generally, wines made in older barrels show higher volatile acidity, or even the sweeter wines, actually, uh, that grape uh, includes some sort of a, a bacteria that, um, in, you know, makes this acidity to become a little bit higher. So that's why we can actually see some really good wines, right? I mean, this is a six quality that has a higher acidity, a one point something. Uh, whereas it's true that we can see a lot of the uh, lower acidity wines, they actually fare better. They they seem to be better wines. So uh, I was kind of right, right? I, that if you have a lower acidity, it's better in terms of the how the wine is considered. Though uh, that doesn't mean a higher acidity wine is a bad wine, right? Look at all these reds here. You definitely want to purchase these ones. Maybe you, you don't want to purchase these last two. High acidity kind of bad wine, I guess. Uh, so apparently it kind of means that maybe something went wrong in, in the winemaking process. It wasn't done as it should have been. But enough about wines. I think we're more interested in creating a dashboard in Jupiter Lab uh, with Atoti. So this is really when it becomes even more interesting as we can create that dashboard. So how can we do that? Simple. We can just right-click on it and go publish in app. Would you publish? Look at that. Uh, finding the widget drawers of the app. So there you go. Uh, let's just start by creating a new dashboard. By the way, this whole application is another thing that comes free with Atoti. And I think it looks pretty cool and you'll see what I mean in a second. Let me just turn off my camera here so you can see the full screen, uh, the full dashboard here. So under widgets, okay, here's the, uh, the features versus wine quality that we've created and we can just drag and drop in here and you see it a few times because I've, I've played with it uh, right before this demo and I've created a, a you know a few instances of it sorry about that but we, yeah we can just drag and drop it in here and there you go it's it's simple as that of course we could you know uh, drag it several times kind of arrange it any way we want as part of this dashboard and obviously we can convert this into a different visualization too same data. Well, okay, that was a bad one. Uh, let's put some uh, the KPIs in here, which might take a little while to load. And we'll do the uh, the one on the right. We'll turn this one into a pivot table. So same data, uh, you know, same widget. We can just assign it different visualizations as we see fit and just play with it. Just create our dashboard. Now we have the filter as the volatile acidity. And we can see that we have this filter for each one of these widgets. So on the filters box here, we can see that we have three kinds of filters that we could apply. We could assign it to each widget. So for example, let's go on the KPIs. Oh, the KPI will still have this volatile city as a variable, but we can change it. We can change it to, let's put the alcohol instead of the volatile acidity and the KPI numbers will change accordingly as it would only take into consideration the alcohol in relation to the quality. So look at that. And this applies to this widget. So this variable, we could just leave it to the widget or we could assign it to this entire page or, you know, in a dashboard, we could create multiple pages basically with, uh, with you know, any widgets that we want. Let's make this a pie chart, which will look horrible for sure, because it will have a lot of elements. 
there you go. It's yeah, hideous. Uh, but you know, just for for demonstration purposes. So as I mentioned, we could use the filter to assign it to this entire dashboard, which basically includes every page as well. So instead of assigning it per widget, we could just make an overall rule that it's per page or per dashboard too. Another cool thing that we want to we, we could do is we could actually add a filter as part of the dashboard just to make it a little bit more interactive. So we can just drag and drop the filter in here. Let's do the rating maybe as the filter and we'll display it as radio button so you can only select one of the ratings and we can you know make this a little bit nicer but we can basically say just show us the good wine we just want to see the qualities of the good wine here so this is what we're seeing now it's applying to this entire page uh, and it serves a very you know interactive fashion of course this is not the only widget that we can add so we can go back to you know the other visualization that we've done in here and we can add this as a widget so you know just click publish and app and now we could see it as part of the widgets just the wine characteristics comparisons and we can uh, drag and drop it anywhere we want in here we are just replacing it of course we have the the filters and maybe it's not a good idea just to have radio buttons maybe we just want to see the poor and the average wine um, displayed too to kind of see the um, the clustered uh, bar charts that we had before now wasn't this easy wasn't this fun you know th this is really how you can just create a data visualization this is how you can create a quick dashboard in Jupyter Lab using a toti it's free so start using it Thank you so much for watching and uh, please subscribe as I'm posting a new video each week. Thank you.